Slovenia. Hi all, welcome to the Jenkins uh, Cloud Native, uh, sorry, configuration as code uh, subproject meeting. Today is May 20th and uh, you will have a common agenda. Just a second, I will share my screen. Do you see it? Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, so we will talk a bit about news uh, which are related to configuration as code, and then uh, we will talk about ongoing uh, development and discuss other topics. Um, if you have any items uh, to discuss today, just uh, please put them on the agenda. Uh, for example, yeah, I would like to discuss uh, uh, configuration as code special interest group. Uh, let's get to that later and yeah, we can add more items if needed. So let's go um, to the graphing news. Did we have any releases of configuration as code related stuff? Mm. Yeah, there was one release. Mm -hmm. Configuration as code plugin. So all right, this one. Would you like to talk about it, Tim? Mm -hmm. yeah. um, so we got two um, pull requests. One was to um, support label atoms, which are elements on nodes, I believe. Um, so the, the properties that can be added to nodes, um, there's, not, there's not many public implementations as far as I know. Um, right. There are still some and some are important. For example, uh, I'm a proud maintainer of the label verifier plugin. And this plugin uh, just allows to verify labels so that uh, they are set properly on your agents. And this plugin actually uses label properties. And before this release, it wasn't possible to configure this uh, um, checks using the JTask. task. So and have you checked and checked that it works now? Or? I haven't checked yet, uh, but I'm definitely going to do so because I have a mini project about uh, updating my demo for full configuration as code, and this plugin is used there. Cool. So, so that was that contributed by Variable. Um, and then there was another one um, where um, we had support for symlink files, but we didn't have support for symlink directories. Um, mm -hmm. So the code's just made a very small change, I think, to allow symlink directories. Mm -hmm. well, that's cool. A and the documentation was fixed because it, we did actually support symlinks, but we just didn't support directories. Um, so the documentation was actually wrong. Yeah, but from other things, it uh, should help uh, with supporting Docker volumes. Mm. Because in, in some implementations, uh, they uh, come as symbolic linked uh, directories, which is a nightmare uh, to handle. But yeah, this uh, state. Uh, so yeah, nice to see that. And we also had update to plugin POM 4.0. So I guess uh, there is no changes there which immediately input uh, Jenkins users, except the fact that uh, now the build flow will be more stable. And on Monday, we had a presentation by James North uh, where he summarized the changes there. So thanks, team, uh, for updating. Cool. Mm -hmm. So regarding plugin compatibilities, uh, we had a few releases uh, which are loosely related to Jenkins configuration as code. So one thing which is not worth is extended uh, read permission. So there we added support for um, um, agent extended read permission. Um, it's a kind of hidden feature in the Jenkins code. And thanks to team, this feature is going uh, to become less hidden in the next week there. Uh, but uh, yeah, now this uh, plugin enables that and uh, once everything is implemented, you will be able to browse agent configurations uh, when you use configuration as code without risk of breaking these configurations. Um, are there any other releases uh, you know about? Thank you. 
I know Joseph sent quite a comprehensive PR to the GitLab plugin. I don't think it's been merged, but. Um, Let's take a look. So, uh, our classic GitLab plugin, right? Uh, GitLab, yeah. Uh, yeah, it's, it's, yeah, it's failing on Windows tests, but Marky seemed happy with it apart from that. But it seemed like, I think it was a, it seemed more likely an infrastructure issue, not uh, actually in the code, but I'm not having a look too closely. Okay. So, yeah. Uh, so it's somewhere in ongoing development then. Yeah. And there's Mesos plugin as well, which is trying to be fixed. Um, mm -hmm. And it might have actually been, might have actually been fixed. Take a look. Um, they don't use uh, GitHub releases. Where do they stop change log? Uh, just, it was just, it's just the last pull request. The last matched one? Yep. Mm -hmm. Got my Joseph's name on it. I'm sure framework ID is set once. Yeah, I'm not sure if it fixes the full <coughs> issue, but um, there's some changes, some refactoring needed of the plugin. Mm -hmm. um, mm. uh, configuration creates cloud instances twice. Yeah. So it's, it's unfortunate. I'm not sure who currently maintains uh, the Nisus plugin. No. So, mm, he was asking, he's, he's been in Kitter. Um, he was asking Kitter for help for a bit and then moved to GitHub issues. Okay. So, yeah, if needed, I'm uh, ready to help though. Yeah, right now with the uh, Hackfest, I miss a lot of communications. Yeah, uh, maybe we could just have uh, RC bot commands for that, so that nobody really needs uh, to handle this stuff. Yeah, separate topic. Okay, so any other releases we know about? I'm not aware of anything. No, that's all I think. Okay. Okay. So yeah, let's move on. Mm, so the, another news is that yesterday we had a Jenkins online meetup uh, where Nikolai <coughs> from Efficode Pragma presented how to migrate from freestyle jobs to pipeline with job DSL. And of course, Jake Kask was a part of the equation uh, in the demos, etc. So if you're interested, uh, you can find uh, the meetup here and uh, we'll publish a recording in a few hours. So just, you will be able to find it here as well. Uh, so. But yeah, it's mostly a uh, follow-up uh, to the previous demo configuration as code of Jenkins for Kubernetes, which included a lot of JCASC things. Mm -hmm. So, and about other news, um, yeah, next week we have UI UX Hackfest. Uh, we already discussed briefly at the previous uh, project meeting, and now um, this Hackfest it became a bit more real. So we have a number of uh, projects and tracks uh, published, and there are some uh, projects which are directly <laughs> related to Jenkins configuration as code. For example, uh, there is uh, a system read permission. Uh, so improvement uh, experience of configuration as code users. So it's basically job two to four being driven by a team and also other areas related to that. I guess our plan is that we will be landing pull requests and Jenkins core right before the Hackfest. And uh, at the Hackfest, we, we can use it as an opportunity for crowd testing and maybe for additional fixes. Is that right, team? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And right now we have a number. Oh, we don't have issues. <coughs> no, none of the plugins we've had have used issues. It's just, just been pull requests so far. Uh, so, yeah, I will probably update the text a bit to highlight that uh, this pro basically these two things uh, uh, are additions to each other. Yeah, I, mean, I think what we do need there is we might need some more issues 
if anyone wants to have a look at some plugins that would be useful, that would be quite helpful. Um, yeah, I agree with that. And yeah, so what I'm going to do today uh, is basically do something like that. Cloud testing is needed as well. I will probably move it to new commerce friendly areas or just merge uh, these bits somehow. Um, and uh, let's see whether we could facilitate contributors. And my understanding that we also have a, a session on uh, next Tuesday, specifically to talk about system grid permission, etc. Mm -hmm. And I had an action, a question to your team, how would you like to handle that? Would it be online meetup? So a lot of user focused content or would it be a developer meetup? From your uh, I assume it would be developer focused because it was, in, it was for Hackfest. Yeah. Well, we can uh, still do a demo in the beginning, another thing. So. Yeah, I mean, it was it was still cover the, the the demo, but it would have more technical information than would go into a user meetup. Um, so it was still it was still cover the like what it is, um, which is what it is, and demo and questions mm -hmm. and whatnot. But also be some be more code and probably the, uh, I was planning to to modify a plugin during the demo as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's great. <coughs> so, yeah, I will publish it accordingly uh, today. And yeah, if you're interested to participate in these stories, please feel free to join the Hackfest. It's open, everyone is welcome. And yeah, you can also find a full list of sessions here. Well, this list is not really full, but yeah, we are getting there. So there will be a bunch of events. Okay, anything else about the Hackfest? Any other stories related to configuration as code? I was thinking about uh, highlighting uh, documentation a bit because it's not only about features. We also want to focus on user documentation. Uh, but I'm not sure how much of the things we have left uh, to be done after Hacktoberfest. During Hacktoberfest, we improved uh, JCAS documentation. There is also a bunch of demos now. Thanks to Victor Martinez, we had dedicated the things. I think part of the issue now is discoverability. Um, mm -hmm. Is people being able to find the right documentation and um, mm -hmm. yeah, there was a couple of questions in a GitHub issue recently about whether it could be published or whether it belongs on Jenkins IO or somewhere else, and just be better plugin mm -hmm. documentation than just because on, plug, on the plugin site it just has like the main page and there's no way of searching. Um, and, and GitHub documentation search is not the best sort of thing. Uh, yes, so we had a pretty much similar discussion about pipeline recently and about extension points recently. So what I was thinking about is actually adding more tabs uh, to the website. So for example, let's take configuration as code plugin. Uh, we could have uh, a number of tabs here. So this is the main landing. Then we could have uh, another tab, which is just about configuration as code, which would show samples, etc. And we could inject metadata for that. And we could do mm. the same, for example, for pipeline templates, so that everything could be discovered. Uh, and yeah, it would need some additional magic, how to glue metadata together. But for example, we already have an engine for markdown pages. Mm. So we we could just uh, specify a reference, for example, uh, to this demo folder or to uh, any other arbitrary location. So yeah, that uh, it, yeah. Yeah, because we, we probably want the, the docs folder and the demos folder, I think. Yeah, so this is uh, the most straightforward way, just uh, to, uh, to reference this markdown page. And then we can uh, use our static generator in order to have uh, additional tab, which basically just this, uh, displays this page. Yeah. Could we do something like for pipeline? Um, if I recall correctly, for pipeline syntax, there is an automatic generation of. Um, this is exactly what we were. Yeah, uh, this is exactly what we were discussing uh, last uh, Friday. So we had a pipeline authoring seat meeting. Uh, just a second. Yeah, I definitely don't want to show this side. Uh, uh, doc, uh, okay, yeah, so he, 
Yeah, here we have a bunch of uh, things and we have a uh, pipeline uh, syntax reference and pipeline steps reference. Uh, these things um, are documented and again, you can uh, map them to plugins. So for example, we could just put uh, this uh, information right uh, on the plugin side, theoretically, or do redirects. Uh, but uh, there is one weakness, uh, which we commonly receive as user feedback, that uh, there is no examples. So we were discussing whether we could have an engine which somehow pulls examples from somewhere, like Java doc, publishes them on this side, uh, but technically could be also done on the plugin side. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, uh, but it definitely makes sense to try it. So if somebody wants to work on the plugin side, uh, yeah, probably I could uh, invite Gavin uh, to present a bit about its internals. Uh, I think what I will do, I will create a project uh, for that, just uh, to highlight that uh, in the scope of documentation. Uh, discussion I have yeah, using pipeline documentation and here we will all set uh, uh, configuration as code and, and the okay. documentation in general because it's it's got a few pages now that's not on the main page and people struggle to find it sometimes Okay. okay uh, uh, but yeah, all sub pages uh, should be linked uh, from the master view, right? Or not? Uh, yeah, there's. Okay, now I understand why it's not discoverable. <laughs> so we definitely need to move this section to the top and we need to ensure that uh, all items are there, right? Yeah. Uh, okay. Mm. That picture is massive. <laughs> okay. Well, it's still better than it was uh, before the Hacktoberfest, but <laughs> yeah. And being a reward, you can... Uh, uh, each so for example more documentation yeah i think that the plugin developers and requirement stops needs a bit of work as well it's, it's two semi-duplicated dots but semi not mm -hmm. yeah it's probably it's probably not linked you probably have to browse the repo yeah, right. which is another issue Mm, okay. Mm, yeah. Uh, Linux uh, pages. Uh, okay, it's definitely something we could uh, put on the agenda. Especially, yeah, it would be really nice because uh, apparently we have uh, problems in the Google season of dogs because we are running out of issues. Uh, after uh, yeah, uh, there were a lot of contributors uh, starting, and uh, yeah, creating a new documentation issues would be definitely great. I thought we had like sixty issues. Surely they haven't finished them all yet. Uh, well, uh, many of them have been already taken. Some of them uh, have been uh, modified as well. After the triage, yeah, now we have seventy-one. Uh, but for many, uh, there are pull requests submitted and other things. So. So this list is uh, shrinking quickly. I think this was just generated off the top doc, so I'm sure there's plenty more. <laughs> yeah, right. So that's why you did the impact test. Yeah. Uh, yeah. As they drop off the top docs list, others will pop up as well. <laughs> yeah. So we have some items there, but I'm happy to add uh, configuration as code uh, directly. So why not? Yeah, there could possibly be some website rework in the advanced topics as well. It's, the layout is not the nicest in the guides now. Mm, it would be nice. So we have a better navigation and content. Mm. Um, but yeah, so if you have any ideas how we could uh, improve that, 
please just uh, submit issues. I try to fix layouts here and there sometimes, but uh, you, definitely it would benefit from more contributors. Yeah, me too. I've done small patches, but it's just okay. mm -hmm. needs a bit of design, I think. Yep, uh, we had one contributor reaching out to us at Hacktoberfest who proposed to entirely redesign Stalin for documentation. There were some good proof of proofs of concept, but yeah, then we basically dropped the ball on that. So we had a follow up, but we didn't uh, push the project further. So maybe it's a good opportunity to restart this discussion. I will talk to Mark. But at least now we have user navigation somewhat. So this page is usable, uh, well, except mobile devices. Okay, so um, yeah, if you have anything else in your mind, just put it in the doc and uh, you'll be happy to refactor for that and uh, present that uh, during the project. Okay, anything else about the Hackfest before we move on? And, uh, yeah, we will uh, task. Okay, so ongoing development uh, team, uh, would you like to summarize uh, the system read permission story? Yeah, so system read and agent extended read um, mm -hmm. approved by Daniel yesterday. Um, so um, a very aggressive reviews just because I made quite a few changes with Daniel. Um, mm -hmm. but if anyone wants to just take another look at it. Um, I think we should be able to get it in this weekly, but it would just be good um, if we can get another one or two reviews. Yeah. Question about that. Uh, so this is the current schedule. We will have uh, the release on Monday. Technically, we have all tooling and we could expedite that. So for example, do the release on Friday, assuming that we get enough reviews. So, do you think it's important to have it uh, before the hard first starts or are you fine this Monday? I would assume that people would be developing off of master, so it wouldn't matter on released versions. Mm -hmm. And yeah. they, could always, they could always build it if they were working on a plugin that requires mm. that. Yeah, and uh, moreover, we have for the meeting on Tuesday. So, but Tuesday yeah. should be out unless something terrible goes. Yeah, well, Mark was talking about moving it to Tuesday, but mm -hmm. um, I think I think people can just like, so any core development will be done on master and any plugin development, they can just build it. And we can help yeah. with that if we need to. Yeah. So, yeah, I tested this manually a bit. But yeah, I'll probably uh, follow up there. I assume there's been quite a few changes since you last looked at it. Mm -hmm. So you suggest retesting it, right? Um, if you want to. Um, so Daniel's done quite a lot of testing, but. Okay. I was also wondering about enabling um, extended read by default for cloud agents but it's definitely an improvement for the next stages. Uh, so it will likely require some additional magic uh, to make it happen. Mm, yeah, yeah, it could be possible. Well, uh, right now our problem that we cannot really distinguish uh, between uh, single shot agents provisioned from the cloud and well, more permanent agents. So it still requires some design work to make it happen, but in principle, yeah. it could be doable. Yeah, I'm trying to look at adding global read roles um, in places if that's possible, just mm -hmm. so that people who don't care, like, are happy for everyone to see everything, um, they can just give out that global read role without having to know what are the read roles that they should be adding. Mm -hmm. um, and I added the folder auth plugin to, for quite a few UX improvements. Because I think that looks to be the best plugin, at least from the UI side. Um, mm -hmm. Okay. Mm. 
So, yeah, for your UX Hackfest, uh, we discussed that it's done. So also extended read uh, permission is done and blog post is already staged and um, uh, you've got enough feedback, right? Um, I think so. Mm -hmm. Just check. Okay. So, second, it's here, read only Jenkins announcement. Mm. Mm, and there was a couple of documentation rework PRs for it as well. So it was quite empty before and there was a bug in the documentation. Yeah. Happens. And yeah, I guess and the pull request for the documentation that has been merged. I mean the developer. Yeah, yeah I, I decoupled them. I, I had I had it in the same one initially, but so it's uh, in manage in managing or in the developer guide. In the developer guide in the views section. Okay. So our developer documentation uh, navigation still needs uh, a lot of improvements. Uh, but yeah. So yeah, it's uh, there. Um, yeah. Thanks for that. I So yeah, I think we have a good foundation for the Hugfest uh, to start working on that. And yeah, we'll talk to Mark. Uh, I think we can target um, uh, Monday for the next release. So that on Monday, we also push out the blog post. We can uh, add a reference uh, additional session from this blog mm -hmm. post and yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Actually, yeah, because the blog post has the mention of it being a featured project. <laughs> so yeah. I was hoping to get it into this week, like this weekly, but Mr. To have the blog post out a week before FactFest. Well, uh, this we solve the release automation. Uh, so I'm a bit hesitant of pushing out the release tomorrow because everybody will be on a holiday. But on Friday, mm. we could technically push it out if it helps. Mm. I don't mind. For me, it's more important to deliver features and to highlight features than to follow an exact schedule for weeklies mm. right now. Especially yeah. since we have all the automation in place, it's not a big overhead. That, uh, really no, it's just, it's just clicking two buttons. Also, a few other buttons, for example, well, we need change oh. log, we need uh, uh, yeah. app releases, but yeah, still it's a lot of like, work which we should finally automate. Uh, yeah, if we can get rid of those steps, then it's just down to two buttons. Yeah, let's see. Okay, I will follow up with, uh, with Mark and Oliver. Okay, so let's go next. A bill of materials. Um, so the PCT bug was fixed and that got us further. Um, we're st stuck with some weird issue in Cloudbees folder plugin. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think that that PR actually fixes it, but it does modernize it. Um, it definitely helps. Oh, yeah. that is incompatibility? No, it's mo it's no, it was overriding the Maven HPI plugin, and my okay. IDE was my IDE was complaining because not all required properties weren't set. Yeah, so it's a uh, follow-up after our Java 11 compatibility effort because right now we require Java compatibility to be explicitly specified in Maven HPI, yeah. uh, but plugin POM does all the magic. Yeah, yeah, it was, it was, so, it was part of a POM cleanup, really. Mm -hmm. Which makes total sense. Uh, okay. The, so the next obstacle over there is... Uh, what? Um, so it's it's a couple of te it's it's two tests related to the health the folder health configuration on the bomb PR. Um, I, I I can reproduce it. Um, not very easily to reproduce it in the actual plugin, but from PCT you can reproduce it. I think with the Mega War. So I think if you define the path to the war as the mega war, you can reproduce it. Um, 
Yeah. Uh, so we yes. think that uh, yeah, Megawatt, Option, uh, Classic, Jenkins, Test Harness, and Real Jenkins, all of them have different uh, class loading behavior. Yeah. And uh, other stuff, so some bugs so, are really tricky yeah. to produce. It's not, it's not picking up the same number of health metrics. So I think it's supposed to be two health metrics, but it's only finding one for some reason. I haven't had enough time to just sit there and Mm -hmm. Fight it. No, maybe it's just the uh, this condition of consumption in the test, because oh, of, yeah. So it works on master. It, so it works without the JCAS bump. So I'm guessing it's some sort of. Well, it could be a transitive dependency influencing it in some way, but I don't know. Mm -hmm. So yeah. Anyway. Uh, nice to see you. So down, yeah, down the bottom, there should be instructions on reproducing mm -hmm. it. Um, mm -hmm. Scroll up. So just re just run that, um, and then you can run the, and then it will output the Maven command it's using, and you can run the Maven command directly rather than running it through PCT, which is easier to. You, know, you can modify it locally as well. Yeah, it was something. No, no, it's not that. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, still, yeah, thanks for pushing it forward. And hopefully, we will get it over the line. But yeah, PCT is difficult, sorry, a bomb is difficult to maintain right now. So, okay, we need to think how we could improve that. Maybe this plugin POM for the zero, setting additional requirements or whatever. Because yeah, right now, any update of uh, plugin is an uphill battle. Even without the GCast test harness and other things like that. Most of them are fine. So most plugin like, updates go smoothly. There should only be two open PRs on bomb, um, which is this and something else. Um, yeah. yeah it's a couple more came in, but they probably. So, yeah, this is a new baseline, which is yeah. so there's, there's, So there's three known broken plus the new baseline. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so for the new baseline, we still have uh, four weeks to figure it out, and yeah, there is no immediate, no pressure to release it immediately. So we will get there. Yeah, it's just nice to have to catch any issues early. Uh -huh. Okay, so should we move on? Yeah. Uh, Okay, so see uh, Jenkins iOS code, I guess uh, no progress there. No, no, we're still waiting for the AWS side to be sorted out, which is kind of waiting for the Azure side to be sorted out so that we get that done and can move on to the AWS side. Uh -huh. okay. And that's getting stuck between multiple time zones mostly. And, and just contacting like three people, three or four people with limited availability. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So right now we are still dealing with ownership transfer and other things. So yeah. yeah. Hopefully we will get there eventually. Okay. So. So. So secret encryption no progress. Still with intention to do that. Yeah. I might return to that after the hack first, but. I'm not sure. Uh, I decided to firstly uh, start with the Jenkins file runner uh, uh, technical depth cleanup. I made some progress there, but yeah, secrets is still something I would like to deliver. And for configuration, uh, for configurator API, yeah, or maybe Yagni, because yeah, we did uh, all the updates. In principle, it's still good to have, but uh, no immediate need. So, anything else with regards to ongoing development? Antonio, anything from you? Nope. Okay, so, yeah, then let's just close down. We have four minutes left anyway. So, switching uh, to a new Zoom account. Yeah, it has been done. 
uh, just five minutes uh, five minutes before the meeting, but yeah, it's completed. Uh, so yeah, now we use Jenkins CDF Zoom. I also uh, shared uh, the credentials with Tim, so that uh, I'm not a single person bottleneck for these meetings. And yeah, we can uh, keep running them. So the next item is about configuration as code seek in Jenkins. So just to share some context, uh, we have been uh, discussing moving uh, to the uh, platform special interest group um, uh, several months ago. But uh, after the discussions, we actually see that uh, the platform seek agenda is already really packed. And we had a discussion about splitting uh, platform seek to two. One is uh, distributions and packaging. Uh, another one is uh, core features or something like that. So Jcask would in principle uh, match uh, the uh, core features, but at the same time we could just uh, say that, okay, we have regular meetings, we have whatever, let's call it a special interest group. So that configuration as code uh, proceeds uh, more or less separately. Uh, what do you think about that? Um, I'm happy with keeping it separately. Um, the platform special interest group is already quite big and there's quite a lot going on there. Mm -hmm. um, and it's not, it's not <laughs> really related to configurations code, I don't think. Other than they want to use some of the features possibly, like in the Docker images, but. Yeah, well, platform, uh, yeah, so that's why we were talking about core features. Because, yeah, Jcask uh, originally started as a part of Cloud Native uh, Special Interest Group and it's still listed there. Well, until I reworked that, because yeah, yesterday we had a meeting and we discussed the, the scope of the projects. And I explicitly said that I don't consider configuration as code as a cloud native feature per se. It's just a must have requirement for any environment. And it's a core feature of Jenkins for me. So uh, I would rather be moving to it and uh, having a special seek uh, would be a preferable option for me especially since we do not really need to change anything because yeah. we have these meetings uh maybe there will be some additional influx of uh, technologies like uh, like said eventual discussions of integrations with helm with jenkins kubernetes separated with other things uh, but well it's good in general to have uh, it and we can use the, these meetings uh, for such discussions makes sense mm -hmm. so yeah then I will uh, probably start uh, doing some foundation work for that. But yeah, I just wanted to match uh, special interest groups and sub projects in some way anyway. Uh, so I think it uh, will be a good thing to do. Cool. I've got to go now, but thanks for mm -hmm. the survey in Antonio. Yeah, thanks all. And I think we can just close the meeting. So, thanks, see you. Okay. so yeah, thanks everyone. Thank you. Bye. Bye.